I was over it, like, can we do this another day? I was dead ass. Nightmare. video that is to promote plastic surgery is definitely not a video that's promoting anything like that i'm just giving my experience of what i decided to do how was the staff before and after recovery so this is when i get into why some stuff was like not the greatest at dr decides um surgery center before surgery which would be like leading up so if i ever had questions um, i would text this number that gets in contact with his, his staff that deal with the patients he doesn't he doesn't directly answer those messages when you text the number it's like customer service i guess so when when you get the phone number which you will get that number after consultation or probably before and you can ask that number any question you have about surgery they'll answer you because of course like you're gonna have a bunch of questions not every single surgery center is going to do the same things for their customers i would text that number i would get my answers pretty fast like definitely within the same day um but that was great they answered all my questions um the only problem i ran into would be when I showed up for my appointment, um, if you watched my first vlog, I did mention what time I had to be there. Now, when I got there at that time, I sat in the waiting room for about two hours, literally just sitting there starving because you're not supposed to eat before surgery. And I did some paperwork and then I still sat there for a while. When someone finally told me to go in the room, they had me go in the bathroom and pee in a cup to check, you know, if I'm pregnant or if I have drugs in my system or whatever. Um, and then I waited in the room for like 20 minutes and then a nurse came in and was just going through the paperwork that I did and asking me some questions like, oh, for the anesthesiologist to know some stuff about me and if I have allergies to medicine and blah, 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 blah. Then they have to take your, your blood pressure and then they put an IV in your arm. Now, I'm not afraid of needles. However, I, like, I don't like drawing blood and I don't like IVs because the, the needle stays inside. And that needle really hurts, I'm sorry. Like the IV needle and like the drawing blood needle hurts. Getting a shot or whatever, or a vaccine or whatever, that doesn't hurt to me. And I just was just thinking like, hopefully they find my vein. Because I've gotten like oral surgeries. I've gotten um, on my channel. If you look, I've got my wisdom teeth removed, and I also before I getting my wisdom teeth removed, I had four teeth removed before that. So I've had two oral surgeries before. Both times I had to get an IV for the anesthesia. So I was not scared of surgery or anesthesia. I've been through that. When you're not hydrated, your veins are less visible than when you're hydrated. So I'm like, okay, hopefully they can find my find my veins quickly. Guess what? They couldn't. Um, the anesthesiologist had to come in after two nurses were poking me and poking me and poking me, trying to find my vein. Um, they were poking me. I was very uncomfortable. Um, then the doctor came in because obviously time is going and he's ready for me and I'm still not on the table yet. So he comes in and he's like, what's going on? They're telling him they cannot find a vein. And even when they would find a vein, it would like move, they kept saying. like. They use some term when it, like when your vein like moves out the way when you um, poke it. I don't remember what that's called. But it was because I was so dehydrated because I hadn't ate or drank since like 10 p.m. or something the night before. So it was now like 4 something in the afternoon. Mind you, my surgery was for like 2. That's when they told me to come was at around 2 something. So it wasn't really my fault that I it was so many hours after I hadn't ate they tell you not to eat 
So yeah, they couldn't find my vein. The anesthesiologist comes in, the doctor comes in, the doctor's trying to find my vein in my foot. He's down at my, literally down at my feet, slapping my feet, trying to find a vein to put the IV in. He can't. The anesthesiologist is trying to find a vein to put in my arm. She can't. So then they're like, okay, do you want to just put her in the OR and we'll just give her some nitrogen gas to relax her and then we'll keep looking for a vein in the OR. And I was like, what? And they were like, are you feeling okay? And I'm like, no. And they're like, what's wrong, honey? Like, what's going on? And I'm like, can we try this another day? Like, I know I'm not going to be out here for months or like for another week or whatever but this is uncomfortable like y'all are sticking me with a needle multiple times in the same arm then again multiple times in my other arm over and over sometimes twice in one spot trying to get a vein like i am a real person this shit is fucking hurting like hurting i was over it like y'all already made me wait in the waiting room for two hours starving and hungry and tired and thirsty now i get in here i'm thinking everything's gonna go pretty smooth i'm sitting here getting poked and poked and poked so when i said that to them i'm like can we do this another day they were like no you'll be okay like literally the doctor said no we're gonna get it done we can do it like nigga what <laughs> this is my money <laughs> how are you gonna tell me no we can get it done like i am uncomfortable i i was dead ass serious when i said can we do this another day i was dead ass. i'm ready to pass out like literally like there was blood everywhere because they would stick me with the needle couldn't get a, a vein pull out the needle put it down quick because they're trying to they're trying to hurry up they're trying to get me in and out of the of the surgery center because they you know maybe it's getting close to the time that they close or they have the next patient to go to but it was literally a crime scene like there was blood all over my the blanket they gave me they gave me a blanket because i got cold in the room not exaggerating i wish i took pictures but i didn't bring my phone to the hospital center because my boyfriend at the time his phone wasn't working it was like broken so in order to know when you know when i got out i had to give him my phone so that they can text or call my phone and he can just pick it up so he had my phone so he was like no we can get it done we'll get it done you'll be okay and i'm like i'm just shocked like I probably was on the brink of passing out to be honest because I don't think I was in my right mind plus I'm, like being poked a lot and like the blood coming out and stuff and I don't like looking at blood that's why I don't like the needles that stay in my arm or like getting my blood drawn because just like I know that that's going on like blood is being exchanged I don't like that so like I'm seeing my blood all over me it's just I was really over it like for real like like he could have told me do you want a refund blah 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 like i would have been like yes i need to go so he was like no we can do it don't worry we're gonna get it done you're gonna get your surgery today so i'm like so they they walk me over to the or i'm literally walking myself to the or they tell me to lay down i'm laying down there's like a bunch of people in the or so like some other voice was like I'm about to put these on your legs just just to make sure you that you hold still. And it was like I didn't look because I was laid down, and like all you can see is this big light. Kind of looks like a what the heck is it called? This thing that I'm looking at. What the fuck is that called? It looks like this thing. <laughs> ring light. <laughs> yeah, literally a big ass ring light. Like when I I'm laying down with my arms out. And this big ass ring light in my face and i can't like i'm pretty sure i couldn't like look up because i could also feel them prepping my arm to put another iv in in case this is getting confusing they were prepping my arm to put an iv in again i still didn't have an iv so and then there's the voice that's like okay honey i'm about to sorry i just got a text she's like okay honey i'm about to um put these on your legs just to make sure that you hold still i was like okay and it literally because I couldn't see what it was, I couldn't look up. It literally felt like big, like soft couch cushion. Like, like you know, like the arms of the couch, like the arm part. It felt like a bunch of those just wrapped around my leg. Like I could feel it squeeze, like that. Like I, I heard that and I felt that. Like it wasn't uncomfortable at all. Like it literally felt so soft. And I'm still looking up. 
and the anesthesiologist was like all right honey i'm about to put this uh, nitrogen gas so that you can relax okay it's gonna make you relax so i'm like okay so she puts that on my face and it's like it like tastes like mint kind of like, i'm just breathing it in i'm breathing it in and it's making me really lightheaded like the smell also because it was like minty kind of taste smellish which was also making me like lightheaded. I did not like the nitrogen gas, so but it did make me like kind of relax and like kind of forget what I was doing. Just to clear up any confusion, nitrogen gas is not normally used at Dr. Desai's office. His anesthesiologist just thought to put me under it because I was clearly distressed over the whole IV situation. It did what she wanted it to do, and I didn't care about the poking that they were doing. Um, while I was laying there because I was being high off of the nitrogen. Here, here, go. Um, yes, I found me. I was like, can you please take this nitrogen off, please? And she was like, oh yeah, honey, of course. So she takes the nitrogen off. And, um, you know, the IV's going now. And then she comes back to me and she's like, all right, honey, so now we're about to get started. So you're gonna, I'm going to give you something so that you can relax, okay? And I'm like, okay. And then I was out. I don't remember anything after that. that. was the tragedy of the IV. Terrible. That was the only part where I was like, this is not happening today. This is a sign from God. They cannot get the IV in. They're taking like 30 minutes to put this IV in my arm, which shouldn't be taking this long. Nightmare. What? Hopefully that doesn't happen to y'all though. I hope this didn't scare anybody from getting a surgery i promise you the two other surgeries i had teeth extractions um there was no problem with my iv it never gave bruises on my arm it never gave like all that that dr desai's office gave mm -mm. even getting my blood drawn for surgery because you have to get blood tests or whatever even doing that was easy that was no problem I didn't have to fast to get your blood drawn, you're supposed to drink and stuff, so I was very hydrated, so that's why it wasn't a problem to get my blood drawn. I was giving, you know that meme with, um, <laughs> with, um, <laughs> like, that was really what it was giving, like, you know what, let me get my shit. That's what it was giving in the freaking waiting room for two hours. Nurses were fire, the anesthesiologist was very kind awesome they said that she's like one of the best um they were like oh yeah i'm gonna get the anesthesiologist to do the iv because she's like one of the best and <laughs> sis could not get it in <laughs> so yeah said i'm located in new york also hey girl and a big question i had was did he do a one month post-op call with you yes he did do a one month post-op call with me that call was i was on vacation july 12th so i was out a month and two weeks post-op it wasn't exactly a month and that call was quick all of the calls with him are like fast he just asked me how i was feeling how are they looking and he told me that I do not need to massage my breasts every day anymore. I can do them once a week massage and to keep um, putting on the scar cream twice a day. So that's what I do. Um, I'll show you guys the scar cream that I use. So this is the scar cream that I bought. I got it from Amazon. It was $16, but it's lasted me since I bought it, which I think I bought it in June. I was 100% ready to do the surgery before doing the surgery from the moment that i put my request for a consultation in till i'm not gonna lie <laughs> the iv situation did make me second guess this but once they got my iv in it was gucci and i was ready to keep going you need to be 100 percent comfortable with your decision before you lay down on that table. Save up your money, do all of the research you can do, ask around what their advice would be, because again, everybody's experience is different, but it's better to know everybody's experience than just one person. So watch as many videos as you can, um, write down any questions you have for the doctor because your doctor should be willing and ready to answer any question that you have. 
he should expect that the person who wants this and who has never done this before to have lots of questions. Don't feel afraid. Anything you want to know, you need to ask or you need to work, research and watch videos about. You do not know more than your doctor, okay? Those people went to med school, those people have multiple degrees, they know what they're doing. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you liked what you saw, make sure you subscribe so that you're ready for when I post another video. And make sure you click that bell so that you're notified when I do post another video. Make sure to like and comment down below what other videos you would like me to do. And thank you so much for watching. Let's <laughs> go.